for the past 50 years living in India, there can't be any other and better support than the support that we received in India. There are uh, refugee camps, uh, more than 120,000 Tibetans today live in India. We run an exile government with the residents of His Holiness Dalai Lama in Dharamshala in Himachal, North India. We have 100 schools for young Tibetan children to grow up as Tibetan. And then more than 500 monasteries. Even after 50 years, we remain a very strong uh, struggle. The situation with the Chinese has been really uh, very bad. They've continued to oppress the Tibetan people over and over again, more and more. Uh, the influx of Chinese into Tibet goes on unabated, increasing every day. They now built this railroad. They have like 5,000 Chinese coming into Tibet every day. So Tibetans are definitely already uh, outnumbered. They're definitely already a minority in their homeland. Uh, this was clearly spelled out in the original agreement with the Chinese that the Dalai Lama was negotiating back in the 50s, that this was not going to be the case. That Tibet was going to be an autonomous region, that Tibetans would have managed their own affairs, and uh, they never, never uh, obeyed their own law, the Chinese. So now the situation's even worse than ever before because there's so many Chinese, and the Chinese have set up so much infrastructure and so, much, so many businesses, and uh, there's a really uh, big, big problem and um, in a way even bigger than before, more more, more crucial. It's uh, more crucial now that something get done about it. So the Tibetans have uh, now risen up. There's a Tibetan uprising going on. Every year, Tibetans commemorate the March 10 as Tibetan National Uprising Day. 2008 has seen riots tear through the streets of Lhasa, Tibet's capital city. The riots spread quickly through other parts of the country. Outside Tibet, these events caught the attention of the international media and the world at large. We Tibetan and Han Chinese brothers sisters, we have to live side by side. Under that circumstances, while we are carrying this struggle for our autonomy, not independence, the, the non-violent method is very, very essential because, you see, in order to live friendly, peacefully, uh, for that, our struggle must carry not quite way. In conjunction with the riots within Tibet, Tibetan exiles in Dharamshala organized a voluntary public peace march to their homeland. On 10th of March, thousands of cheering refugees urged on the peace marchers, who left the Uprising Day venue on foot to begin their journey.
protest march sent a clear and simple message to the governments of India and the rest of the world. The Tibet is still an occupied and enslaved country, and the Tibetans want freedom. We are on, on the march to Tibet and that is mainly to commemorate Tibetan national uprising. As we started the march from Dharamshala, there were protests, not just in the Zal community, but uh, it happened very strongly in Tibet. And we only want to say that we are Tibetans, we belong to Tibet and we, we, we want to Come, come back to our own country. As a human being, we believe we have a right to go back to our own country. And nobody can stop that. So we believe that our human action would be reciprocated favorably by the Indian government as well as the world bodies. Our goal through this march, you know, to raise, one of the goals is to raise the conscience of the people the local people, Indian people, the international media, and to create opinion, a strong opinion, at a very crucial period. The fact of the matter is, is this is a refugee situation. Everyone keeps overlooking that. So we see over and over again that the Beijing government, not the Chinese people, but the Beijing government break promises and the world has to wake up to this. So that's why I've joined this march to help to bring this uh, whole problem to light to the rest of the world. On the 17th of April, as the peace marches were arriving in Delhi, the Olympic torch also arrived in the Indian capital. Denied recognition at the Olympic event in China, Tibetans from throughout India converged in Delhi for an alternative torch relay. With a massive torch, the Tibetans lit a wisdom lamp. Colourful and vigorous protest march ensued, marred by random clashes with the police who tried to contain and curb the protesters. Granting the 2008 Olympic Games to a nation that has an appalling human rights record demonstrates a monumental lack of wisdom on the part of the concerned international agencies. member his bad thinking his bad thinking is used then destroyed all monasteries and kill the peoples of in inside in Tibet you can't have a uh, uprising without troops you can't have an uprising without a uh, guerrilla army I think his march is not violence 
This is non-violence. This is my dream. So I am going to Tibet. I have one world, one dream, to Tibet.